to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Copies of tonight's agenda and the entire information packet that the council will be using are available online on the city's website. First, we'll consider the approval of the minutes. We have minutes from the meeting of the mayor and common council on April 12th and the closed session of the same date. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve the minutes. And I'll second it. There's been a motion by Ms. Gilbert and a second by Mr. Dayoff to approve the minutes. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes seem to have it and the ayes have it. And the minutes are approved. Uh, next item is presentations. We have uh, a few presentations tonight from the mayor. So we're going to start well, to start off with the mayor. So we'll do that. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. So first, uh, we have a proclamation here uh, to recognize <laughs> public, serv uh, public Service Recognition Week. Um, Whereas Americans are served every single day by public employees at the federal, state, county, and municipal levels, and the actions of these public employees enhance the quality of life in jurisdictions across the nation. And the city of Westminster is served by many dedicated public employees, providing a variety of services to the community. And the services performed by these employees include general administration, housing and code enforcement, human resources, information technology, public safety, public works, and recreation and parks. And the Mayor and Common Council wish to recognize the work performed by city employees and those public employees employed by other levels of government. Now, therefore, I, Joe Dominic, Mayor of the City of Westminster, uh, on behalf of the Common Council, do hereby proclaim that May uh, 2nd through 8th, 2021 is hereby declared as Public Service Recognition Week in the City of Westminster. And be it further proclaimed, that all residents are encouraged to join the mayor and common council in celebrating the accomplishments and contributions of government employees at all levels. Adopted this 26th day of April, 2021. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the next item on the agenda is our quarterly update on the Westminster Fiber Network project. And uh, Ms. Matthews, I'm not sure, are you going to uh, start off or are we just gonna go straight to Ms. Giovanni? Um, feel free just to go to Ms. Giovanni. All right, thank you. Uh, we're pleased to have with us once again, Ms. Valerie Giovanni, the uh, uh, Westminster Manager of Ting Internet. Ms. Giovanni, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me yet again. Um, let me get my share screen going here. Okay, are you seeing the right screen, the slides? Yes, we are. <laughs> Wonderful. It's always nice when it works out that way, right? Um, okay, so tonight's presentation is actually going to be real quick. Um, it is sweet and short, sweet and to the point. Um, gonna recap the growth on the fiber network. Um, and long story short, we had a phenomenal quarter. January, February, and March were very good to us, um, very good to all of us. And um, we saw a lot of growth on the network. Um, pilot phase, and phase one are well above 40%. Phase two is above 30%. Phase three and phase four, both above 20%. We lit the first three out of city customers um, and our total take rate citywide is just under 30%, which is really, really exciting. So um, we had a great quarter and um, I would say that a lot of it is we had some really great marketing stuff, which I'm, I'm going to get into, but I'd also add that, um, you know, we have some um, competitors in the cable industry um, and they did us some definite favors by um, putting data caps and raising their rates. And so we've heard more than ever how thankful the city of Westminster residents are to have an option when it felt like they had no say in what was happening. So kudos to the city staff and council for having the, the um, ability to provide the Westminster fiber network for the citizens. It's, it's been a great reward for them. Um, okay, so let's talk about the marketing that happened over the course of the quarter. Um, in January, we focused on the idea that it's a new year. Let's have some new internet. 
Um, we did some <clears throat> online digital ads, and that seems to be where we get so much, um, so much uptake from. Um, we used Steve Moore um, for his um, testimonial with the business community. Um, and uh, again, Heather and Matt Cole um, from Molly's Cafe, um, who, you know, while they are a business, um, they do a lot of the things that a homeowner experiences. They, you know, while they're running their um, cash register and system, they're also doing security cameras and they use a voice over IP telephone and they stream YouTube TV in the cafe for people who are there. So lots of things that layer on. Um, and so they, they talk a lot to their customers in the community about um, how rich the service is um, and has been to them. And so they continue to be a great supporter for us. Um, in February, um, I went ahead and repeated our um, creative from last year because the whole fall in love with Ting and break up with your current provider um, really worked out well last year and it did great again this year. Um, we had some um, Valentine's Day promo um, in the paper and we also did it a lot um, through social and display ads. And then also um, we took a new billboard um, and put the new prices for residential up on the billboard just so that people can see in case they hadn't actually had a visual yet of um, what the price tiers were. And then March, we had an amazing promo for March Madness. Um, our marketing manager in California um, is a great athlete, very athletic, loves basketball. And so she ran with our national campaign for March Madness. Um, and just the whole thing was planned out so well from what the prize packages were to what um, the different, there were blogs about March Madness and streaming sports. Like it was just so well executed. Um, and we really, we broke our record for promo adoption in Westminster. It was just phenomenal. Um, we gave everyone who onboarded a $50 gift card to Fanatics so that they could buy their favorite sports gear. Um, and then everyone was put into a drawing for a Samsung 55 inch 4K smart TV. So again, a very uh, productive uh, promo. That's it. That was our quarter. Um, any questions? Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh this time from the council. Um, Mr. President, not really Mr. Quick, just a quick comment. Great job lo loving those numbers and hopefully they'll continue to head in that direction for some time to come. So wonderful work. Great job. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Gilbert. Um, thank you. Um, I just wanted a little bit of clarity based on what was in our um, packet. I noticed a couple of the numbers in phase four, the take rate was not exactly what um, was shown on our screen. So I just wanted to make sure that either, which of the sets of numbers were correct. So um, I noticed our take shows 18%, but I believe it was mentioned in the presentation that it was over 20%. So I just wanted to make sure when we get our minutes that that is corrected. Um, could you tell me what, what numbers you have for the number of past premises and number of subscribers that you're looking at, Ms. Gilbert? Um, on phase four in our packet, it says 1,185 on the past premises and 251 on the number of subscribers, but the take rate is 18.8%. Well, let, that's the, the correct numbers. I'm just getting out my calculator. Nothing like doing math under pressure. 251 okay. divided by 1185 is 21.18. So you have an error in your packet. I, I, kind of, I thought that based 20, on your presentation. <laughs> 21.18% is the actual number. All right, good. Thanks for catching that, Ms. Gilbert. Any other questions? Mr. President. Mr. Dayhoff. I'm really excited that the take rate outside of the city is starting to happen. And I think that's gonna be, uh, um, I think it's gonna really provide some great benefits for, for our citizens that we've taken that measure uh, to do that. I'm really excited about this report and I really appreciate their work. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Dayhoff. Thank you. All right. If there are no other questions, uh, thank you very much for the, another great report. And uh, you know, we're, uh, you know, it's as you said at the outset, it is, uh, you know, I've had a lot of people uh, mention how pleased they are that they have the opportunity to uh, you know, to find an alternative for internet service uh, 
particularly over the last uh, 14 months as everybody has been uh, so dependent on that. So, uh, you yeah, know, thanks again. And uh, Thank you. All right, so that will move on. Uh, next item is results of the City of Westminster Water Issue Survey. And for that, we will turn to our City Administrator, Ms. Matthews. President Pecker, if you'll give me a moment, I will um, sure. uh, start the slideshow. So first, by way of background regarding this item, as the Mayor and Common Council likely recall back in October of 2020, you authorized the Mayor's execution of a contract with Polco National Research Center for a water issue survey. Um, the purpose of the survey was to help inform the city's public public education and outreach efforts related to its water reuse initiative. Um, as you also know, one of our focus areas in our strategic plan for 2018 to 2021 is ensuring water and sewer capacity for future generations and our water reuse initiative was launched in support of that goal. Um, so to get started, I'll just provide a little bit of background just about the survey methodology. Um, so, as I mentioned, we have hired the National Research Center to conduct the survey. Um, the survey results, as I mentioned, are to inform our public education and outreach efforts that we're working with CAPS and Associates on. There were 35 randomly selected households within Westminster's water service area who were, had the opportunity to participate in the survey. Those 3,500 households uh, were divided into two, two equal groups of 1,750 within the city limits and 1,750 outside our city limits. We had an overall response rate of 21%. And to put that into context, the National Research Center shared with me that the typical response rate for a topical or issue related survey generally ranges from 12% to 30%. Um, so we were kind of right there in the middle in terms of our response rate. Um, would be remiss if I didn't mention that all surveys have a margin of error and the margin of error for this survey was uh, plus or minus 3.6%. And the final survey results are weighted so that the proportions relative to homeowners, um, renters, male, female, different age groups um, are reflective of the entire community. So this survey um, basically included some general questions related to um, kind of our customers' attitudes towards water and their thoughts about um, their drinking water. Um, and then it became increasingly more specific related to our water reuse initiative and their thoughts on um, reclaimed or recycled water. So over eight in 10 of the survey respondents um, strongly or somewhat agreed that the city keeps water to required federal and state regulations. In terms of uh, when they were asked about how important access to water was for economic uh, development, seven in 10 uh, felt that it was either extremely or very important. Um, but at the same time, we had um, six in 10 of the survey respondents felt that the city's water supply was plentiful and more than adequate, both for our current use as well as our future use, which obviously speaks to the need uh, for us to educate uh, the community about the issues that Westminster is dealing with. Kind of along the same lines, when asked about uh, whether they were concerned about future water uh, shortages, um, over four in 10 expressed either very or some moderate degree of concern, but close to six in 10 were not particularly concerned at all that water shortages were going to be an issue for the city. The survey, as I mentioned, became increasingly specific and also had some components of education in it. Um, so one of the earlier posed questions to survey respondents was their familiarity with reclaimed or recycled water. Um, question was basically very basic. Um, and we had almost 38% um, who said they were either very familiar or somewhat familiar, but we had a, a fairly large percentage um, of people who had never heard of reclaimed or recycled water or may have heard the term, but really didn't uh, have much knowledge of what it meant. So when asked whether or not it was possible to clean or purify recycled or reclaimed water to be part of the city's uh, drinking supply, about four in 10 of the survey respondents indicated um, 
that it, they either believed this very strongly or somewhat believed it. Um, but I think one of the telling numbers on this page is that 36% um, believe it's possible, but they would want to know more. And once again, I think that speaks to a common theme that we've talked about for several years now of how important it is to have a robust education and outreach campaign. I think part of the good news also is that there were only 6% of respondents who did not think it was at all possible. And certainly there was a large group, 20%, who just weren't sure. Um, so once again, um, that's why we've hired Cats and Associates to help us uh, with our education and outreach efforts. So as I mentioned, the survey became increasingly more specific and actually had an education component, um, kind of using different language, different graphics as the survey continued on. So when asked whether they would support or oppose using water that has gone through a multi-stage purification process for drinking water, the numbers started shifting rather dramatically. Um, as you'll see, we had about 75% or three quarters of survey respondents who strongly supported or somewhat supported um, reclaimed or recycled water that had gone through several steps to purify it. Survey respondents were also asked about their degree of confidence that the city could safely purify reclaimed water to safe drinking standards. Um, once again, there's some variation, but there was a, a fairly solid number of survey respondents, roughly six in, out of 10, who felt either very confident or somewhat confident that the city um, could purify reclaimed water and make it suitable for drinking. And the next five slides basically all address basically the same basic question, which is, would you be more or less likely to support using purified reclaimed water in Westminster due to each of the following? And there were a number of statements that I'm about to go through, but this was sort of trying to somewhat test messaging and when provided information, how did survey respondents provide, respond to that information and did it change their attitudes? So the first um, category was, um, Thanks to advances in modern technology, it no longer matters where water come from, comes from. We have the ability to purify used water and make it safe for any use. And as you'll notice, the uh, kind of the medium color blue is much more likely to support and the kind of shade of green was somewhat more likely. And so if you add those two numbers together, we have about 84% of survey respondents that when they read that statement, indicated that they would either be much more likely to support or somewhat more likely to support um, having this as a source of drinking water in Westminster. Uh, same question, just a different statement. Um, using purified reclaimed water would help ensure the city has a water supply that is drought resistant, that is available regardless of rainfall. This would ensure the continued prosperity of the community through business growth and new residential development. Once again, you have a, a fairly high percentage of folks who would either be much more likely to support or somewhat more likely when the question was posed in this context, specifically 86% of survey respondents um, responded affirmatively. Um, this next statement basically was informing survey respondents that, of other communities on the East Coast that were using purified reclaimed water as a drinking water source. Um, the survey instrument specifically mentioned Loudoun County, Virginia, Hampton Roads area, Virginia, and Upper Occoquan um, around the Centerville area, Virginia. And once again, you see numbers that are in the above 80% of folks who responded positively to knowing that there were um, other areas in our general, you know, within a couple hours um, that were using reclaimed water as a drinking source. Um, the next area that was sort of tested was water from an advanced water purification facility would have to meet or exceed federal and state drinking water regulations. Uh, once again, you're seeing the same rough pattern of those who are much more likely to support or somewhat more likely to support Westminster using purified reclaimed water. Uh, in this case, we're sitting at around 87%. And then the, the last statement um, that was made and, and survey respondents had the opportunity to react to I was basically through nature, all water has been used, used and reused since the beginning of time using advanced technology to purify reclaimed water merely speeds up a natural process. In fact, the water produced through advanced purification is some of the highest quality water produced. And once again, we're seeing numbers um, above 80%, in this case, about 86%. Um, one of the things we typically do with surveys that we've worked on with the National Research Center is have them 
I basically sort of slice the data. It's called either cross tabulations or subgroup comparisons to see if there's any statistical differences between different subgroups. And there were a few that I just wanted to share with you. Um, in general, homeowners were more concerned about the possibility of the city facing a water shortage, and they were also much more likely to support uh, the city working on new water source creation. Homeowners were also more familiar with the concept of reclaimed water than renters. However, renters were more confident in the city's ability to purify reclaimed water to safe drinking standards than were homeowners. Kind of turning to subgroup comparisons um, based on income as well as ethnicity, uh, those making less than $50,000 a year were more concerned about the city facing a future water shortage than those making between $50,000 and $149,999. Um, white non-Hispanic survey respondents were more likely than other races to support the idea of reclaimed water. Uh, this next one is probably not that surprising to any of you, but respondents um, who are aged 18 to 34 were more likely to believe in the possibility of the city's ability to clean or purify reclaimed recycled water to be part of our drinking supply than were those ages 35 and older. That same age group of 18 to 34 uh, in general were more supportive of using purified reclaimed water than those older. And lastly, um, our city residents, um, obviously our water service territory goes beyond the corporate boundaries of Westminster. Uh, Westminster residents were more familiar with the idea of reclaimed water than those living outside of our boundaries. And hopefully that has something to do with some of the uh, communications we have had through our city newsletter, your own meetings and discussions and um, other sources of information. So that is just sort of a, a, hopefully a brief overview of the results of the water issues survey. Um, I certainly would be happy to answer any questions that you all have. Thank you. Are there any questions for uh, Ms. Matthews? Mr. President. Mr. Cavaccio. Oh, Ms. Matthews, did they indicate if there were any other surveys that have been conducted of this nature uh, that, that they were aware of, or did they do any research to find if there were any others and to see maybe how we compared? Uh, I did not ask that question, Councilmember Cavacci, but I can. This survey was very much customized to the city's own needs. Um, it was sort of developed through an iterative process between um, the National Research Center, city staff being Mr. Glass and myself, as well as Katz and Associates. And so I don't know that there would be some directly on point benchmarks just because the city was so customized to our own needs, but I can certainly ask them if they have any information about that for you. Yeah, and, and not that we want to pay them to do any research yeah. over and above what they've done, but if they happen to know of something, it'd be interesting just to see. But to your point, it's unlikely that, that there's anything quite this specific out there. As a matter of fact, this, this might be something other folks might be able to use down the road, so we should probably... Uh, let folks have access to it, which I'm sure they will since it's now in the public record. All right, thank you, Mr. Cavacci. Any other thoughts on this, questions? Mr. President. Mr. Yingling. So just a comment about it. I think that this further kind of supports uh, what we already all know is that, you know, as we continue this project, which will be uh, you know, over the probably the next several years that, you know, this component is of vital importance to communicate with the public and educate them on not only what we're doing, but the scarcity that is there with the water sources, because clearly this sh survey showed that there are a decent, you know, amount of people that are not aware of this. 60%. You know, um, so for like future councils, it, you know, hopefully will serve as a guide to continue to invest in that messaging and education component because I, I will come back to a, semi, a webinar that uh, the water plant staff, myself, Mr. Glass, I think Ms. Matthews was on a few years ago and they talked about I think Katz Associate actually put it on, um, that if you really don't get the education component right, it can derail the entire project. So 
That is the takeaway that I got from the results. That's all, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Yingling. Anyone else wish to ask any questions or make a comment? Well, Mr. President. Mr. Kavashi. This is a quick follow-up to Mr. Yingling's comment. I, I agree with you 100%. I know that this, you know, this is pretty much your second to last meeting. So if I do come back, and this isn't a campaign statement, I want to be clear. If I come back, I certainly will continue to try to push to make sure that education component's there. And I'm sure my colleagues that will be here, the, the three of you that are going to be will as well. I know you put a lot of time and effort into this and uh, it's not going to go to waste. We'll we'll keep pushing that forward and keep working hard to make sure the education component and and frankly, it's almost a marketing component to some extent um, continues on. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cavacci. Uh, first, I just want to echo uh, what Mr. Cavacci was saying. Certainly, Mr. Yingling has played a key role in moving this project forward, and uh, you very much appreciate all the hard work he's done both here in the city at the state level. You know, as well in uh, in trying to uh, move forward this idea. You know, as I listen to the survey results, it seems to me like it's a it's a very positive uh, overall result. You know, we've got a very strong baseline report. You know, to understand you know what people in Westminster understand about these issues. You know, clearly we've got you know um, a need and more opportunities to educate people on the need for Westminster to continually. Uh, expand its water supply. That's critical. People don't, I think, like people don't have enough of an understanding of what the limitations are on our current supply and the work we need to do you know, to increase that going forward. Um, and we also have, I think, you know, a pretty positive start, you know, in terms of support for our effort to provide uh, people, you know, pure water going forward. That you know, in a, in a from a source that will be you know, certainly one that uh, you know, ought to satisfy the city's needs indefinitely, indefinitely. And I think that's critical as well. You know, we, we know that we have the ability to do that. You know, I'm excited about moving forward with the pilot project and I'm looking forward to over the next few years, you know, continuing to help inform the people of Westminster you know, about you know, what we're doing to try and ensure you know, a virtually inexhaustible supply of pure water you know, for them. So um, looking forward to that. Um, so from that, uh, we'll move on to, I think, we have one final presentation. Mr. Mayor, if you'd like to uh, to do that. Thank you, Mr. President. This is a, uh, a proclamation recognizing uh, Ms. Barbara Matthews for her service here in the city. Uh, this is her last meeting. I believe her last day here at the city is a week from today. Um, whereas Ms. Matthews helped initiate and move forward the city's water reuse project, which will benefit the city for decades to come. And Ms. Matthews organized the purchase of the Stocksdale property, which will be a cornerstone project in the city. And Ms. Matthews treated the city employees with respect and appreciation for the work they do. She always kept their best interests in mind. And Ms. Matthews helped facilitate the recruitment and hiring of several new department heads that have proved to be positive additions to the city workforce. And Ms. Matthews has, uh, was a stalwart um, believer in having solid policy and procedures. She took measures to improve the city's policies and procedures and ensured uh, they were implemented. And Ms. Matthews' oversight and guidance of the renovation and build out of the new city offices at 45 West Main Street produced an excellent working space for staff and inviting place for citizens to visit and, and something Westminster can be proud of for years to come. And Ms. Matthews did not hesitate to shoulder the responsibilities of running a department when circumstances dictated while at the same time continuing to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the city. And the mayor and common council wish to recognize Ms. Matthews for her exemplary service to the city of Westminster. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the common council of the city of Westminster, Maryland, in conjunction with Mayor Dominic, uh, hereby extends its sincere appreciation to Barbara B. Matthews for her many contributions to the city of Westminster government and her dedication to the betterment of the organization adopted this 26th day, April, 2021. Um, we also counsel myself, we got a gift that will be sent directly to your home. And even better is we got this, this pewter plate, which is more scarce, scarce than diamond, gold, um, that all precious metals. You can't get these anywhere. We can't figure out how to get any more made. This is uh, it's basically worth infinity. 
<laughs> dollars, Bitcoin, whatever you're uh, you're using these days. Um, so we have this as well, and uh, I will make sure this this gets. Um, oh, uh, Councilor Yingling. Okay, cool. This is the only look you get on one, Mr. Yingling. They're super oh. scarce. So uh, this this might be this might be it. So um, so I just uh, wanted to say. Um, and as Miss Matthews came onto the city shortly before I did, we're leaving roughly at the same time. Uh, it's been quite a pleasure. And uh, I really uh, enjoyed getting to know Miss Matthews and working closely with her on uh, just about all those things that we uh, we mentioned in the proclamation. And I don't know if anyone else um, would like to, to say anything about Miss Matthews while, while we have the chance. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I certainly will. You know, Miss Matthews brought a level of uh, decorum and respect to our employees. Uh, that was was welcomed. I know there was uh, a lot of positive feedback related to um, her treatment of the employees, and it was very evident from day one that that one of her primary things was to make sure she looked out for all the folks that work for the city. And I know they're grateful for that, and certainly uh, I am as well. And I think above all, that's the thing that stood out most in my mind was uh, those efforts and in, in looking out for 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 those folks, for our folks, I should say. Thank you, Mr. Ingling. Uh, Mr. Kalachi, anyone else wish to be heard? Mr. President. Mr. Ingling. Yeah. I also want to thank Ms. Matthews. You know, uh, as, as, uh, you know, I came on the same time as the mayor and her experience uh, in municipal government. Um, she was, uh, you know, never unwilling to take my call to help educate me on how municipal government operated. Uh, and I have a, a high amount of respect for her and her ability to be a high level, you know, strategic thinker uh, in operating the government. I thought that, uh, you know, I, I think she will be missed by the city and wish her nothing but, uh, you know, good luck in her retirement. Uh, and please don't be a stranger. And thank you very much for your service. Thank you, Mr. Yingling. Anyone else? Right. If not, I'd just like to add, um, in addition to what others have said, I think that, uh, you know, what I'd like to, to note is that Ms. Matthews has served the city of Westminster with tremendous integrity, you know, which is, while not a rare thing, it's always an important thing to note in public life um, as being deeply appreciated. You know, it's something that uh, gives the citizens a great deal of confidence in their government. And so we, we value that highly. Um, also, she brought a breadth of knowledge you know, from her previous roles to city government, which I think is probably unrivaled and unmatched you know, in any other uh, public servant we've had here in the city. And that's been tremendously valuable as well. And finally, I'd just like to say that when you look back on the things that the mayor talked about that we've accomplished uh, you know, under her management over the last uh, you know, few years that she's been with us, these are some of these are very fundamental core uh, types of things that, uh, you know, really are essential to the way the city needs to operate. And I think that you know, while you know, they may not always be as appreciated as they ought to be, I think they're critically important and they've uh, really created a strong foundation for the city as we move forward. So you know, it's been a rough year with the pandemic. You know, I think that uh, Westminster you know, has, um, I don't wanna say uniquely, but certainly you know, navigated you know, the travails of the pandemic better than many other communities that I've read about and heard about. And I think a lot of that has been due to some steady management. And uh, you know, certainly Ms. Matthews has provided that you know, over the past year as, uh, as we've all you know, tried to figure out our way forward. So you know, Ms. Matthews, for one time, I'll just say Barb, instead of, you know, you're, you know <laughs> thank you so much you know, for all you've done for us as city administrator, and we deeply appreciate it. Thank you all very much. I really appreciate the kind remarks. and. Um... I would just say no one uh, basically accomplishes anything without a tremendous group of people around them. And I have been very fortunate to um, have a great staff that I've had the privilege of working with for almost four and a half years, and certainly very dedicated elected officials who have always kept a focus on the city's well being. So thank you all very much. And I'm particularly appreciative of the uh, Westminster plate. I was trying to figure out how I could sneak one out of HR before I left. <laughs> So, thank you all very much. We, we busted it out of HR by force. <laughs> uh, everyone clings to these things. Again, uh, more scarce than diamonds. Um, 
But uh, I think, and you know, I, I don't know if anyone else would, would like to say anything. We do have a, um, I believe we have a special guest tonight um, that that's made a a, a, a pop in. Um, that he felt he he wanted to say something, and I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say. I think now's a good time for that. Yeah, I thought there was a a glitch. I've actually have texted Dave and Shannon asking why someone named Bill Mackey is popping up on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mayor Dominic and, and council members. I appreciate being able to participate in the meeting and make some remarks. Um, Barb, I just want to congratulate you on this new uh, exciting chapter for you. Um, and I also want to congratulate you on 45 West. Wow, what a beautiful project. Uh, Drew sent me some pictures. I have to say it looks perfect. It's amazing. I wanted to take this opportunity also to thank you for your mentorship and your leadership for me personally and for so many people. Um, I learned a lot about good management from you by watching you lead with principles and watching you extend yourself to help all of us every day in so many, many ways. Um, I, I think off the top of my head that the birthday cards that you send out are, are just such a wonderful example of your personal touch in a professional way. And there are so many uh, things that you uh, did to make improvements at the city. I think of the incredible improvements and the professionalism of the agenda, packets, uh, professional improvements to city reports, contracting, purchasing, appropriate legal review, uh, encouraging employee advancement, and the list just goes on and on. So thank you for all you've done for me, and again, for so many, and I wish you and Milton the best in your new chapter. Hip, hip, hooray. Thank you so much, Bill, and I'm going to hold you to our uh, promise to have a lunch date once I become a lady of leisure next week. So. <laughs> please, please do. Please do. Thank you. I definitely will. Thank you so much, Bill. Right. I just want to say it's good to see you too, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> or Mr. Mr. Mackey. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Bill's fine. Thank you very much. It's good to see all of you. I should note that Mr. Mackey is our former Director of uh, Planning and Zoning, and it's a pleasure to see him again. Uh, Bill, thanks for very much for joining us tonight. Thank uh, you. While we're doing this, um, you know, would any of the anyone else uh, wish to uh, be heard? Any invite any of the department heads who might want to uh, weigh in? If anybody would like to do that now, or we can let them do that uh, during the departmental reports, whichever they prefer. Sure, I'll, I'll chime in. It's uh, Tom Ledwell. So I, I will say that I think um, the two things that, that I look for in a good leader are competence and character. And I can say without a doubt that uh, Barb has shown me uh, that she shines in both of those areas. So it's been a pleasure to work for you. And um, I know that there were uh, rough days and good days. And I say that, you know, I appreciate your even keel on both of those because sometimes you help me to maintain that same even keel. So uh, you will be missed and uh, wanted to thank you for, for your time here. Thanks so much, Tom. Ms. Levin. You're muted, Ms. Levin. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm completely unprepared because I had no idea that they were doing this tonight, but I do want to say thank you so much for these past few years um, of assistance. You made my life, my job much easier and I'm grateful for it. And I wish you much joy in the new chapter of your life and um, uh, just go and have a good time. Thank you, Alyssa. And you made my job and my life a lot easier as well. So I'm very grateful to you for that. My pleasure. Thank you, Ms. Lynn. Mr. Glass. So I'll go next. Um, I wanted to wish uh, Barb the uh, the um, good future, and um, and also to uh, uh, to report that uh, she certainly taught me things. So that's all I have. Thanks. Thank you. Jeff. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Davidson. I want to thank Barb for uh, helping me out through the years and uh, helping me get to where I'm at today. Uh, she'll be missed, and uh, definitely won't, won't miss her morning calls uh, in the winter time. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, trust me, I, I look forward to not waking up at 5 a.m. to have to make a decision about whether we open or not as well. <laughs> All right. 
that's it for now. Uh, we'll move on with the agenda. Thank you all very much. Um, we have two public hearings tonight and public hearings in the city of Westminster are led by the mayor. So I will turn the gavel over to the mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. It's your favorite part of your job. I, I know that's not. I don't, know, I don't know if they can uh, bang any louder than you did to start the meeting. That was, that was a really good one. <laughs> the first time it's ever stopped my heart from beating for a second. Um, all right, ordinance number 935. An ordinance of the Mayor and Common Council of Westminster, Maryland, approving and adopting a budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021, ending July, uh, June 30th, 2022. Ms. Colston. Good evening, Council and um, Mr. President. Um, tonight we have um, the ordinance number 935 uh, amended for you. Um, the city's new fiscal year, as the mayor said, will commence on July 1st, 2021. According to Article 2 of the Charter of the City of Westminster and in consultation with the mayor and the members of the Common Council Finance Committee, the city administrator prepared the proposed budget for the Common Council's consideration. She presented that budget on April 12, 2021. A public hearing was held on April 19, 2021, after the introduction of ordinance number 935. Tonight, a public hearing provides Westminster residents and other interested parties with the additional opportunity to offer their thoughts and opinions as we, the mayor and the common council continues the deliberations regarding, regarding the draft budget. To highlight some of the changes to the budget proposal. Um, after the work session on April 19th, we were direct, staff was directed by, by the mayor and common council to um, make certain changes to the budget proposal. To summarize those changes, um, the mayor and common council accepted the recommendation of Evergreen Solutions LLC to adjust the city's pay structure by 3% for the four, four year 2022 based on their market survey. The recommendation of Evergreen Solutions LLC to reclassify certain public works and police positions due to significant market shifts was accepted. Also in regards to the Evergreen Solutions market survey, uh, the mayor and common council accepted option one for four year 2022 employee weight adjustments with the associated approximate cost across all funds of $664,000, inclusive of the recommendations noted above, as well as resulting fringe benefit increases. Uh, additionally, the um, addition of a full-time help desk attendant position in the technology department at an associated annual cost of $82,500 was authorized and two full-time equipment operator one positions for the street department at an associated annual cost of approximately $142,350 was authorized. Uh, finally, the personnel costs were updated to reflect staffing changes such as promotions and um, that have occurred in the current weeks as well as the benefit cost increases resulting from staff turnover. Sewer fund expenditures associated with the ENR biosolids upgrade project was updated to reflect work that will continue into fiscal year 2023. So ordinance number 935 has been, reflect, has been revised to reflect the collective impact of these modifications to the fiscal year 2022 proposal. The capital improvement program for for fiscal year 2022 to fiscal year 2027 and the related individual project descriptions have been updated as well. Um, the Common Council is scheduled to adopt ordinance number 935 on May 10th, 2021. At this time, staff recommends that the Mayor and Common Council hold the public hearing to receive community input on the proposed fiscal year 2022 budget. And I am here for any questions if you should have any. All right. Um, anyone uh, on the council would like to ask any questions or make any statements? Mr. Mayor? Mr. President. Thank you. Just uh, like to comment, um, not so much ask a question, but in comment in my role as uh, chair of the finance committee, just wanted to uh, once again 
uh, thank uh, the staff for all the hard work they did in the preparation of the budget. And that extends to, of course, Ms. Matthews and Ms. Colston, as well as all the department heads and everybody else in the finance department that uh, spent time on this. Um, you know, very much appreciated. You know, uh, I think that, you know, Westminster has uh, had a, you know, been noted in the last few years for uh, you know, strong fiscal management and uh, has received awards to that effect. And very pleased that we, I think, continue to do such solid work, you know, as reflected in, uh, as is reflected in this budget. Um, also, I want to thank my colleagues on the Finance Committee, uh, Mr. Yingling, as well as the Mayor, who are both, uh, you know, uh, participated actively in a, uh, in a budgeting process this year through the committee as we worked with the staff. Um, so very pleased with the result, and uh, I think we're able to... Uh, to accomplish a great deal as you know, as a former uh, you know boss of mine, uh, U.S. Senator Paul Sarbanes used to say that, um, that you know what they say is one thing, but where they put the money is another. And uh, I think that we're putting the money in the right places in this budget, and uh, look forward to uh, its adoption at our next meeting. I would like to say that I'd like to thank everybody that worked on the budget as well, um, Ms. Colson, uh, Ms. Matthews, especially. Um, I think it was uh, you know it was a good. Um, good budget that was put together well when as a elected body, we really had one issue to discuss um, in depth to, to figure out everything else um, came in, uh, you know, uh, where, where we like it to be. It was an, it was a, it was a, a tidy, neat budget. I think it addressed, um, you know, our budget reflects our, uh, our strategic planning. And I think that's, uh, that's number one. It's easy to get, um, you know, bogged down in what's going on this year, but I think it addresses the things that we, we we're planning for not just this year, but five years and 10 years out. So I wanted to, wanted to say that. Anybody else like to say anything? All right. Uh, that being said, um, we are, this is a you know, public hearing, so we're going to leave this open for public comment um, till the end of the week. We'll do three o'clock on Friday again. Um, and uh, we'll close out uh, then. Uh, so if uh, no one has anything else to say, we will um, end this hearing. Pass the gavel back. Well, I guess we have one more hearing here. So um, the next hearing, it's on the constant yield tax rate. Ms. Colson again. Good evening, Council. I am monopolizing your time tonight. I apologize. <laughs> Pursuant to the Maryland state law, the constant Yield tax rate is calculated by the Department of Cessations, Assessments and Taxation for each taxing authority for the state. It represents the property tax rate for the coming tax year and will generate the same amount of revenue that was generated during the current tax year. The highlight of the um, constant tax rate public hearing, I'm sorry, the notice of the constant tax, constant yield tax rate public hearing was published as required by state law on April 13th. 2021 edition of the Carroll County Times newspaper, and a copy of that advertisement was placed in your agenda. Um, the real property tax rate must be set at the constant yield tax rate hearing or at a later time if announced. The tax rate is generally adopted as part of our overall budget. The ordinance number 935 adopting the fiscal year 2022 budget introduced on April 12, 2021 and with adoption of which is scheduled for May 10th, 2021, uh, 2022, excuse me. Um, on a positive note, the fiscal year 2021 property tax rate was set at 56 cents per $100 of assessed real property. And with the direction of the mayor and the members of the Common Council's Finance Committee, the city administrator proposed budget for fiscal year 2022 assumes the same rate. This rate, while 2.7% higher than the constant yield tax rate of 0.54544 per 100 of assessed real property will generate an additional $283,693 of real property tax revenues. And um, just to reiterate that this is the same um, tax rate, there is no increases for this year recommended. So at this point, the staff recommends that the mayor and the common council hold the public hearing to receive community input regarding the city's fiscal year 2022 real property tax rate. And I am available for any questions. Thank you, Ms. Colson. I would like to say too, um, 
Uh, I did not mention this in the last hearing, but uh, the, the last hearing for ordinance number uh, 935 concerning the budget and the constant yield tax uh, rate, we did not receive any uh, public comments. Um, but again, we'll, we'll be leaving this one open. Um, does anyone have any comments or questions for Ms. Colston? All right, uh, that being said, again, we will leave this uh, hearing open um, due to the nature of things. We'll leave this open until Friday at 3 p.m. again for public comment. Um, you, can, you can email, email uh, comments into um, our city clerk or to comments at westgov.com or comment with an S, comments with an S at westgov.com. And now I will hand the gavel back to Mr. President. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, move on now to the next item on the agenda, approval of the consent calendar. We have three items on the consent calendar this evening. May I have a motion to approve? I'll move to approve, Mr. President. Been a motion by Mr. Cavacci. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Mr. Dayhoff to approve the consent calendar. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. aye those aye. opposed say nay. The yeah, ayes seem to have it, the ayes have it. And the consent calendar is approved. And now it is time for our report from the mayor. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. President. I believe I've spoken enough this evening. I don't have much of a report. Um, <laughs> back to you. This is your penultimate report as mayor, you realize. Reports from standing committees. Lost some more. Reports from standing committees. Uh, begin with um, our liaison to the Arts Council, Mr. Dayhoff. Your report, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Dayhoff. Uh, Economic and Community Development Committee, Mr. Ying. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we held an Economic and Community Development meeting on Friday morning, it was last Friday, to discuss uh, three different areas. So I'm gonna actually start from the uh, last one we discussed. Uh, so Ms. Matthews, you wanna pull up our new branded logo for our water reuse initiative. I hope you warned her that she might have asked you to do that. I did, I'm just having a few problems here. Give me just a moment, please. That's fine. There you go. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, we need bigger than that. So uh, as you all know, we've been working uh, with Cats and Associates for kind of the messaging, uh, as you saw from the survey on our water reuse pilot. Uh, the committee uh, discussed the branding and logo on Friday. Uh, there was about eight or nine different uh, color schemes, uh, you know, the logo on the side, and then we tinkered with the water for our future as the, our tagline. So Pure Water Westminster, water for our future. I hope the council will get a, at least a t-shirt made for me at some point so I can wear it, you know, out to city events because uh, this was obviously, I know, very important to the entire council, uh, but, you know, one of, one of my main initiatives I really wanted to focus on. So uh, that being said, any comments about the logo that anybody would uh, Mr. President, Mr. I'll, I'll comment on it since I do uh, make my living somewhat in this space. I think it's really great. Who, who did the design? I did. No, no. <laughs> it was a, obviously none of us. It was a graphic. None of us. Yeah, yeah. Was it from the consultant? Yes. Um, there was uh, Data Instincts as a sub consultant to Caps and Associates. So this mm -hmm. was very much sort of a collaborative process between Mr. Glass and myself, um, Data Instincts um, and Cats and Associates. Um, we narrowed down some options that we shared with the committee on Friday, but Data Instincts gets uh, most of the credit for the work. It's good, it's well done, it's clean. I like it, looks really good. And I'll give credit to uh, council president and the mayor. They did uh, actually tweak the tagline so that could be considered an original city tagline, potentially. Um, we looked at a couple of them and they said, well, what about water for our future? And, and everybody really liked it. So uh, it, very excited about it. So, so cathedrally thinking water did not, didn't cut the mustard, huh? <laughs> hey, I'm good. I'm good with as long as I get my t-shirt. All right. <laughs> that's what I want. So uh, that's really exciting that that was the, the discussion about that. Uh, the second thing we talked to was, you know, uh, the Be Kind initiative. 
which uh, I think we all kind of agree that it, it's a great initiative. They're doing great things. You know, there was uh, a, a little bit of, you know, a legal concern, uh, a little bit of concern about, you know, how we would partner with them, really. Like, what does that look like? Uh, I think the mayor made some comments about, you know, controlling of, of messaging. Uh, but we got some really good advice from the city attorney. I think like the outcome of it was we as a committee said, uh, you know, for staff to start and please chime in here because I know you guys were, you know, uh, discussing it a little bit more, had a lot more to say than I did. But uh, we we would like staff to to start to look into maybe what what it would look like. What are the nuts and bolts of of doing something with them. There was mention of a, you know, actually the city procuring the be kind signs and giving them out. Uh, city attorney was okay with that. There was talk of maybe a resolution that we could pass. Uh, but you know, the outcome was okay. We're going to have continue those discussions. I think one of the things I I mentioned was a uh, certainly because it would be an ongoing uh, you know strategy between be kind and the next council I'd probably just punt that to the next council have them but staff is going to be uh, get the wheels turning on that is that an accurate statement okay good. pretty close all right so the final thing we discussed which is again very exciting I was uh, like you know a giddy you know you know, young student, you know, when I was in middle school, you know, Friday morning for this meeting was the Stocksdale redevelopment property. So a little background, as you all know, we purchased the Stocksdale property across the street from uh, Johansson's because it's one of the key properties in the downtown. And as this entire council and previous councils and future councils are committed to the revitalization of, of, of the downtown uh, community, Stocksdale is definitely a huge part of that. So we engaged Partners for Economic Solutions as our consultant. We were put on hold for about a year due to the COVID uh, pandemic. And when we met with them a year ago, we kicked around in the committee and says, okay, this is kind of our idea of what we would like to see. But ultimately, you know, we could say, oh, well, we, we want to see, you know, the Four Seasons Westminster, but ultimately it's going to be what are the market conditions um, that allow for the feasibility of this project? Like what could go there? You know, so we gave them some direction. We talked about mixed use office. We talked about maybe some residential. We talked about a boutique mixed use hotel. And so they did this study. And a couple of the things that they talked about in it were, uh, I mean, I won't kind of belabor specifics about mixed use office versus residential, but based on market conditions, the research they did, that's not exactly the financially feasible option for potential development there. However, they did say and talked about a boutique hotel. And what they mean by boutique hotel is three to five stories, maybe 50 to 80 rooms with a higher price point than the competitors currently here like uh, Boston and Days Inn or um, Best Western. And they believe that it is financially feasible, uh, that the return would be there. They reached out to multiple organizations that got data back um, on that there seems to be, and I think we all kind of knew this, was there was a a gap in that kind of service. Uh, so they also talked a lot about, you know, the impact of parking on that redevelopment. So, you know, whether it's three stories or five stories, it, it, parking is going to be tied very closely to it. Uh, you know, so that's something we obviously need to talk about. But the timeline for it is, we have been advised that, you know, hospitality, as everybody knows, has really taken a huge hit. There's a lot of uncertainty. When are the when are the conferences going to come back? When are the you know business meetings face to face going to come back? When are the events going to come back? When's McDaniel going to come back and have homecoming and football games? You know, these are the types of things. You know, when's tourism going to come back to kick to Gettysburg? You know, at full uh, uh, you know full numbers because those are the kind of the things that are going to feed the success of the boutique hotel. So we uh, have tentatively said, we're gonna just pause for hopefully no more than a year, two years, uh, maybe a, hopefully less depending on the market conditions and then kind of recircle back. 
the uh, we talked about the next steps as a partner for economic solutions has and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Matthews, they have in their proposals given us, I believe, options to help us solicit the redevelopment of the property. So it, it's got to be the right timing. But overall, as the chair of the economic development community, I was ecstatic with the outcome. Partners of Economic Solutions have just been great to work with. So what I'm recommending and what the committee is recommending, which we agreed to, was that we commit to the strategy of that we want to have a boutique hotel there, barring un, some unforeseen radical change in market conditions, you know, in the next two years. But commit <clears throat> to the boutique hotel is the vision that we want. Uh, the second is, you know, commit in, in principle that, you know, continue to work with partners for economic solutions. Um, they have been great to work with. Uh, I liked specifically on kind of their proposals that they have experience in Charlotte and they had a lot of experience in redevelopment, creative financing in this area. So I think we interviewed like three different areas um, or three different people. So those are kind of the two recommendations as of right now. And be mindful that, you know, the redevelopment and successful redevelopment of this property is going to be very, very closely tied to parking. And uh, having a solid parking study can actually be a very uh, attractive asset to when we choose to, when future councils choose to move forward in the soliciting of redevelopment bids, that will be very attractive to have. Uh, it, to, to a developer to be able to see you know, what we have currently, what they could do. Frankly, it might even lead to the opportunity the developer says, okay, well, we could pitch in on that. So those are kind of the three you know, rec recommendations of the committee. And I'm happy to answer questions. Certainly if Mr. President, Mr. Mayor would like to chime in on it, uh, we encourage them to do so if I missed anything. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, do you have anything to add? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I just want to echo uh, certain parts of it. I, I think uh, certainly um, the PES has done a great job and, uh, and uh, very they, they exactly what we wanted. Um, they came back with the numbers we were looking for. Um, well, the numbers aren't always what we wanted, but they came back with, uh, with the parameters, the numbers we were looking for. And I will say that, um, you know, I was excited about the idea of, uh, of a hotel, like a boutique hotel. It was my number one choice. And I didn't know if it was going to come back um, as favorable as it did. In fact, it's the most favorable option out of uh, basically all the options you could you could have there. Which um, I don't want to say it was surprising, but I was certainly um, happy to see that that's the case. And um, you know, just looking at some of the numbers, um, just for McDaniel alone, in 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 the the uh, number of people that they send uh, to hotels outside of the area, um, you know, had had me. I guess, you know, I was optimistic going in, but it was good to see the numbers uh, confirmed. And they did bring up uh, parking concerns. Uh, the cost of underground parking, uh, not that I ever thought it was not expensive, is a lot more expensive than um, uh, than I thought it was. So uh, uh, I, I think uh, Councilman Ealing's um, comments about parking are true. And I think, I think um, you know, I, I think a parking study is definitely going to play a, a role in this. Um, but it was... Uh, it was certainly, um, I think, a, a good meeting is a positive meeting, and um, it was good news. So, um, uh, again, just very pleased with PES and uh, and what they reported to us. Um, the timeline uh, wasn't as exciting. Um, apparently, the you know the capital for this kind of thing. It's not that the outlook is isn't good. The outlook is there for a BTK hotel, uh, but apparently, you know, the capital is a little dry right now since um, all the people that tend to build hotels. Don't have didn't have a lot of extra money coming in over the last year, so um, so this is a long term commitment because it's probably about two years before. As of right now, they were suggesting that we you know we put out the RFP in two years. Now in six months or a year, that could change. Outlooks change, but that's the outlook today. So this is a long term commitment, and which means it's you know goes back to cathedral thinking. I think um, not quite as cathedral as some of the other uh, some of the other ideas, but um, it's just certainly going to be something that's going to touch multiple councils, you know, maybe more than two, uh, probably three. And um, so it's it's important again that um, uh, some of these you know the work that's been done gets gets you know kind of passed on and carried on. But uh, it was a good meeting. I was. Like Councilman Ealing said, it was a 
Good news. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'll just you know echo a lot of what uh, was just said in that, you know, first of all, I think that we, we made a good choice when we settled on PES as our consultant on this. What I really like about them is uh, they gave us, you know, not the information, you know, we not the numbers we wanted to see, but the numbers we needed to see, which I think was critical uh, in terms of what the relative costs are of different types of developments, which ones, you know, um, offered the best return on not only the city's investment, but also, you know, the economic prospects of each investment, which I think was really what we were looking for because our goal, I think, is, you know, to see the properties developed to its best and highest use in terms of creating economic activity here in the city. Um, you know, I think we all, you know, like the idea um, of a hotel, and I think we were all pleased to see that, uh, you know, a hotel actually turned out to be, you know, um, you know if, if things work out the way, you know, we hope that they would. It, it turned out to be probably the best option that we had in terms of a good return you know, for the city and, and you know, creating economic value you know, for, for our downtown. So I was pleased to see that. Um, it recognized that you know, as we come out of uh, this pandemic, as uh, the mayor mentioned, you know, a lot of people in the hotel business you know, are focused on existing projects you know, as opposed to expansion and uh, the, you know, the prospects of um, you know, being able to move forward are, are some time off. Uh, so I think that that's um, important for us to keep in mind. You know, we, we secured the property. You know, we have the opportunity to, uh, you know, to make other things happen on our downtown. In the meantime, certainly, you know, a very positive step is the opening of the new the city administrative building, which as the pandemic eases and people return to downtown, you know, is, is going to certainly going to help anchor that block and, and help, help make the case for not only you know, the development we want to see, but other developments in the area. Um, so that's all very positive. Um, so I think we've got time to think about things like, you know, what do we want to, what do we want to, you know, you know, what changes, if any, would be practical in terms of the traffic flow around the area? What do we need to do, you know, about parking in the area? Because you know, we did identify clearly a need, as, as we've talked about in the past, I think, you know, that while we've got a great parking garage, you know, there, it's, it's not as large as the other one. And, you know, the Arts Council and some newer restaurants do create some demand in that end of Main Street. It's not that a lot of parking isn't more than, isn't you know, just a couple of blocks away, but, you know, people like to park close to where they're going to be. So I think that's something we are going to need to pay attention to. And, and we will have the opportunity to do that, you know, in the time ahead of us, you know, before we have to put this property back out on the market to move it forward. So all in all, I think it was positive. Um, I think it would be valuable you know, for anybody who is immediately interested, as uh, Councilman Yingling suggested, you know, to, view the, um, to view the video, to look at the PowerPoint. We will, I think, you know, schedule a visit from the PES folks for the whole, for the whole elected body you know, prior to us having to move forward, because I think that will be valuable for everybody to be you know, really well informed about this. So if you don't have the time to do it now, we'll make sure that everybody gets updated you know, before we reach any decision points. All right, thank you. Good, good report, Mr. Yingling. And uh, again, thank you for uh, your service as uh, chair of the committee and uh, your leadership on these issues. Uh, move on now to the finance committee. Um, I have no other report other than the budget that is before you, which has been the committee's work product uh, in terms of our passing on the very good job done by the staff. Um, Personnel Committee, Ms. Uh, Gilbert. I have nothing to report. Nothing from the Personnel Committee. Public Safety, Mr. Cavacci. Well, only one thing, Mr. President. Um, things continue to be nice and quiet. Um, you know, there have been a few things published recently where a few folks writing some pieces in the paper have made some comments relative to uh, crime levels in the city. And frankly, I was a little disappointed in one or two of them where they made mention of the fact that crime has increased in the city. And I think all of us in this room know, and I wanna restate it again for the hundredth time, that crime has continued to decline in the city of Westminster for at least a dozen years. And actually, as best we can tell, it's been going down for the better part of 20 years. Uh, it's down 56% part one crime, has dropped 56% in the last 12 years, and it consist, consistently declines. Um, so I, I don't know where these folks are getting their information, but I will say as chair of the Public Safety Committee, it is frustrating to see misinformation published like that. And uh, 
I just want to state once again, crime, and I'm not making things up to make it sound good. These are these are part one crime statistics reported to the FBI by our police department. And <coughs> it's not up, it's down. And it has been down for 12 years. So that's it, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cavacci. Public Works, Mr. Yingling. Nothing to report. All right. Thank you. Uh, Recreation and Parks, Mr. Vail. Um, I guess there's no report. Um, I guess um, perhaps maybe Director Gruber at a later point in the meeting will we'll talk about the wine stroll. It was very successful. It was very well attended. I think it went. Um, I think it was. Uh, I think it was a great. I think it was a great event for the city of Westminster. Another great event. So I really appreciated that. But uh, other than that, no report, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dayoff. And nothing. I have nothing from the Technology Committee. I will now take a moment for council comments and discussion. This is the uh, time in the meeting when uh, you know council members get to comment on anything that uh, doesn't fall under their regular committee reports. Um, so we'll start with Mr. Cavacci. Two, two quick things, Mr. President. Number one, echoing uh, what um, Councilman Dayhoff just said. Uh, I, I know a number of us went down and had an opportunity to see the uh, the wine stroll. I guess stroll is really not the right word, but we're calling it that, which I think is smart because we want to keep the momentum going. And I, I want to compliment Ms. Gruber and her staff um, Ms. Gilbert was volunteering out there and working at one of the booths as well. So I, 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 I think it's wonderful that we're doing that. There were people having a good time. You know, was it a stroll? Was it packed? Was it, you know, the robust activity that we have during non-pandemic events? No, but it was as close, I think, as we could possibly get under the constraints that were there when we planned it. And I think they did a wonderful job. And I saw a lot of people having a really good time. Um, and more importantly, I think it keeps that momentum going so that as we finally start moving out of this, Fauci said this morning, uh, he's advocating we can get rid of the masks outside. So things are looking good. I think we're on, on the right track and this was a great move and it really went well. And I, I'd like to compliment them. Number two, um, th this is, uh, just a, a quick, I guess, unfortunate little announcement. Um, I, I'm sure a few of you in this room know who Bird Brown was. Um, Bird was a massive figure in the community, in the recreation and sports community. Um, he was just an awesome guy. I, I, I know a lot of us probably knew, and certainly anyone watching this, probably most of them knew who he was as well. Um, he passed away very unexpectedly this morning at a, at a young age, uh, left behind three, three young men and a wife and lots of devastated uh, athletes throughout the community. And uh, the, the repercussions are going to be uh, felt for some time. So I just felt it incumbent uh, you know, to mention that at, at this meeting, that uh, it's a great loss for our community and, and uh, we're going to miss them greatly. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Kavachi. Mr. Dayhoff. Yes, word spread through the community very quickly about uh, uh, Bird Brown passing away, and, and uh, it makes all of us uh, extremely sad. Um, I really appreciated uh, Councilman Kavachi's uh, comments on part one crime that has declined 56% in the last uh, decade or so. I think it's we've all worked extremely hard uh, on um, supporting uh, public safety in our community, and we've worked hard on these issues. The police have worked uh, especially hard on 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 this um, on this, and um, it just makes me really sad when this information is passed around in the community. Um, on the uh, water reuse initiative, um, I was uh, I'd like to call the, the council's attention to question number twenty one. Are you aware of anything that the uh, Westminster Public Works Department does to inform the public about water supply and water quality issues? Um, I would really like to redouble our efforts. Maybe we can get it out in the newsletter. Maybe we can get it out on Facebook um, uh, about our water reuse initiative. Um, anecdotally, um, I guess it would be about 60% of the public is not aware of the water issues and, and awareness is going to be really um, important for that. So. I guess we need to think out of the box and start talking about that a little bit. Um, I also want to publicly acknowledge and thank um, uh, Councilman Yingling's um, work on the water reuse initiative. That's been that's been just perfect. I, I really appreciate it. I think it was very timely, and he worked 
uh, a lot of long hours and really hard on that. And I'm also really, um, I'm really happy uh, about uh, the uh, the initiative to come forward with the um, uh, the gear and the Stocksdale uh, lot. Um, I think a boutique hotel is perfect. I think you're going to find the geology underneath of that area to be a little difficult for underground parking. It's, it's cavernous limestone, so that might be difficult. So we're, we are going to have to take a good look. Mr. President, do you remember, I know, I know the Longwell deck, because you and I were in office when we built those parking decks. The Longwell deck, we can put another, we can put another um, a deck on that, on top of that. Can we do it on the Westminster Square? Um, unfortunately, we cannot. We asked that question you know, during the meeting because my recollection was, as you're noting, that uh, you know, we did plan for, for some expansion ability and on the Longwell you know, garage, we can do another level and we can also build on the side, which was the other mm -hmm. plan there. Yeah. But uh, we did not make um, you know, I thought plan we had. composite. No, unfortunately, because of the, uh, you know, the attached building, we were unable to do that. So we did not, um, I'll be glass informed us that uh, we did not include that in the plans. Well, I, th I think the idea of a boutique, a boutique hotel is perfect. Uh, some retail space on the first floor. And then also we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that when we built uh, West, the Westminster Square building, I know we talked about um, building that in such a manner that we could add to it. Um, and I, I don't think that went through. But we got a lot of feedback from um, maybe higher end condos. So we might want to keep that in the back of our mind also, maybe maybe a floor of condos on that uh, for some downtown residents uh, to be living right downtown. Um, I'm just excited about um, I'm excited about all of that. Um, all of that effort, that that economic and, de and development um, initiative there. We've worked on it for a long time and um, Looking forward to rolling up our sleeves. Oh, and then one other question, Mr. President. How long have we kept the tax rate at the same amount? It's been a long, I know we reduced it a couple of years ago by a couple of pennies, but how long has it been? Um, you know, I was wondering that myself earlier and I didn't yeah. have a chance to look it up, but uh, it's I think we should look it up because I mean, I think we should be really proud of that strong fiscal management that we've had um, uh, on the mayor and council. Um, I think what three of us, at least three of us, four of us are, are self-employed businessmen in the community. So, I mean, and I think the, the strong fiscal management is reflective of, of our rolling up our sleeves and, and, a, and a strong fiscal approach to, a, to the budget and, and uh, taking care of the taxpayer dollars. I think that's it, Mr. President. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dehoff. Ms. Gilbert. Well, I think my colleagues have mentioned almost everything I wanted to um, to mention. So I thank them for cutting my speaking a little short. But I uh, did want to add that um, I was volunteering at the Wine Stroll and the Parks and Recs Department did a wonderful job, um, given every single um, problem that has existed the last year or two, they, they actually took it a, a event and turned it around and reimagined it COVID style. So um, they did a great job and I had a great time. All right. Thank you, Ms. Gilbert. Mr. Yingling. Oh, sure, well, thank you, Councilman Dayhoff for the kind words about the water reuse uh, pilot. However, I would be remiss if I didn't say that the mayor played a huge part in that. Uh, we sure, both went yeah. to here, here. lobby the governor and Secretary Ben Grumbles uh, from Maryland Department of the Environment, who were uh, so supportive. So thanks uh, to the administration. Thank you. Here, here. And thanks to um, even our, our local delegation. You know, when we needed to be put in front of those people, they were uh, all about helping us out. So thanks to the mayor, too. It was a group effort. Um, I wanted to just talk. Uh, you mentioned Councilman Dayoff about the communication, uh, which I totally agree with. Uh, but just just remember the survey was done by Cats and Associates to help craft the proper communication. So they're gonna we're getting there, but okay. we want to be strategic and you know do that. So that that's coming though. Um, and uh, and and just one thing about the Stocksdale redevelopment about the condominiums. Why yes, I mm. I agree that would be nice. Uh, but but based on you know the market conditions, what where our inventory is for residential. You know, at this point in time, okay. it's not really there to okay. be feasible for it. So I just wanted to 
give some clarity on that. And uh, okay. but still, thank you for your kind words. That's all, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Yingling. Mr. President. Mr. Mayor. Uh, well, first, I just want to thank Mr. Yingling for, for what he said. And I'm surely the deal is closed because of my good looks and charm, but he did the work that, sure. that got us uh, there, you know, in front of Secretary Grumbles and the governor. Yes. Um, uh, and I also uh, wanted to know if uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Dayhoff knew how far that cavernous limestone went down and what would possibly be underneath of that. It went pretty far. We used to go in a cave back uh, down um, south, south on the, along the railroad tracks. We used to go into a cave. Um, what, what's the name of the street? I, I'm drawing a blank. Um, but we used to we used to go in a cave, and you could go pretty far up underneath. And then uh, we've had problems with um, with uh, uh, sinkholes back up at the old uh, livestock yard when we hauled livestock in there. Because I, I used to haul livestock in there when I was a kid. Well, from my understanding, we got rid of all the sinkholes while you were mayor. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> I know, uh, uh, but apparently on the low end, it's uh, $35,000 a spot on the very low end for underground parking. So if you could find oh, those word. caves and maybe we could park there, um, that could be helpful. Oh, my word. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and thank you for all your work on these projects, Chuck. So let, let me just close out um, council comments with uh, two things. One is, I neglected at the last meeting, and I apologize to everybody uh, in, to, for not noting the passing of former council member um, and council president, Kenneth Hornberger. Um, yeah. Ken was uh, someone that uh, none of us had the opportunity to serve with. He predated all of us who are currently serving, uh, but uh, was uh, well known in the community and a fixture you know, in, uh, in downtown Westminster, and um, as was his... Uh, his late wife, uh, former Senator Sharon Hornberger. And so uh, I'm very sorry to, uh, to note his passing and our condolences to all of his family and, and friends. Uh, the second thing I wanted to mention to everybody is that, uh, you know, uh, as a follow-up to uh, the discussion we had at our last meeting where we were discussing in general terms, um, you know, that uh, we would have to make some decisions in the months ahead about how we want to uh, you know, make use of the federal funds that are going to be coming our way uh, from the American Rescue Plan. Uh, the mayor and I, along with uh, our finance director, Ms. Colstead, had a very preliminary conversation you know, with our financial advisor, Mr. Kevin Quinn and Pam Kelly from uh, Y River Advisors. And, uh, you know, they, um, you know, they, they've, um, you know, we had a good conversation with them about, generally speaking, you know, what, uh, what it was we'd like to be able to accomplish. Uh, this is something they believe they can help us with. They're taking a look at putting together, you know, a potential scope of work on, uh, you know, how that might proceed. So that will certainly be one option available to us in terms of uh, trying to figure this out. You know, we will, um, you know, we'll report back to you, you know, with uh, more information as uh, they get back to us. But I just wanted to make you aware that we did have that conversation. Um, and that concludes uh, council comments and discussion. Uh, moving on, we have one item under bids, award of a contract for collection and disposal of municipal sludge from the wastewater treatment plant. Mr. Glass, tell us about the sludge. Yes, sir, the uh, current sewer fund budget includes funding for the collection and disposal of municipal sludge that's generated at the, at the wastewater plant. Um, it's kind of a euphemism that's also referred to as biosolids. It sounds a little cleaner actually so uh, but it's all the same thing believe it or not um so on march 9th the, we put out an rfb request for bids that is with the bids being due on april 8th bidders were requested to provide funding for three years and that's going to be the fiscal years 22 23 and 24 um and using an estimated quantity of 5,500 wet tons per year we received two bids um one from Community Refuse Services, LLC, for a three-year price of $1,213,713. And one from Sandy Run Landfill Incorporated for a three-year price of $1,765,500. City staff has evaluated the references and the bid from Community Refuse Services in the amount of $1,213,713 and finds it acceptable with regard to the city's needs. Um, work under this contract, of course, will begin on uh, July 1, um, 2021. Um, and the, the fiscal year 2022 budget then 
Uh, that sewer fund has an allocation of $600,000 for, for this work um, to remove the biosolids generated at the treatment process. So um, with regard to um, the budgeted numbers, we should be in good shape with that. I think it's important to point out that while we, uh, we took the bid out for three years um, or a three-year term, um, I feel like it's unlikely that we'll take it that far because by the time, probably in somewhere in 2023, we'll be uh, handling our biosolids by drying it um, in the, the new dryer that's being currently, um, that building's being constructed at the wastewater plant as part of the, the, uh, the ENR facility. So, uh, so I don't think we're gonna be um, utilizing um, probably the last half of this or at least the last year. Um, so I, I think that's, that's worth noting. But at this point, the uh, staff would recommend that the mayor and council accept the unit prices bid by Community Refuse Services of Newburgh, Pennsylvania, execute a contract in the amount of $1,213,713 for the collection and disposable or disposal of the city's municipal sludge as further described in the attached bid. And of course, authorize the mayor's execution of the associated contract. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Mr. Glass. I may have a motion on uh, to on the award of uh, the contract for the sludge uh, uh, disposal. Second. There's been a motion by Mr. Yingling and a second by Mr. Cavacci to, appro to approve. Uh, any questions for Mr. Glass or Mr. any discussion? Person. Mr. Cavacci. Um, uh, just to be clear, that's for, it's 400000 per year for three years for that's a total correct. of 1.2? That's correct. Thank you. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Cavacci. Any other questions or any comments on this? Mr. Glass, is this a um, is there a prospect for reuse of these uh, biosolids uh, once they are uh, once they depart the city, or is that or are they just going to a landfill? No, sir. Um, by the time we're done um, the work at the wastewater plant, the uh, biosolids will be dried to a uh, granular kind of uh, consistency, and the idea there. Um, actually um, created some time ago was to take that material to uh, Lehigh Portland cement and have it burned in their lime kilns and used as a fuel source. All right, very good. Thank you. That's important information to, uh, to include in this. Yes. Is there any further discussion on this? Hearing none, are you ready for the vote? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes seem to have it, the ayes have it. And the contract is awarded as presented. Thank you, Mr. Glass. Yes, um, Next on the agenda are ordinances and resolutions. We have two ordinances um, or two items on, under this category for this evening. The first is adoption of ordinance number 933, an ordinance amending the code of the city of Westminster, chapter 36, procurement and contracts, to add section 36-7, sustainable procurement practices. Ms. Matthews. Thank you, President Pecoraro. Um, the Common Council introduced ordinance number 933 on April 12th. Um, as you indicated in reading the ordinance title, um, this would add a new section called Sustainable Procurement Practices to Chapter 36 of the City Code. This new section also provides for adoption of a companion resolution that would set forth the goals and objectives of the City's sustainable contracting practices, as well as direct staff to follow the same in the acquisition of goods and services to the maximum extent practical. Um, just as a reminder, adoption of a green purchasing policy would fulfill one of the required two priority actions for the city to become Sustainable Maryland certified. Uh, so with that uh, brief background, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the Mayor and Common Council have. All right. Thank you, Ms. Matthews. Um, may I have a motion uh, on uh, adoption of Ordinance Number 933? Motion. Well, second. There's been a motion by Mr. Dayhoff and a second by Ms. Gilbert to adopt Ordinance Number 933. Are there any questions for Ms. Matthews or is there any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move on to a vote. All those in favor of adoption of ordinance number 933, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes seem to have it and the ayes have it. And or ordinance number 933 is adopted. The next item is adoption of resolution number 21-02, a resolution of the Mayor and Common Council of Westminster adopting a sustainable procurement policy. Once again, Ms. Matthews. Thank you. Um, as I just mentioned in the staff report for ordinance number 933, um, a companion resolution uh, would be basically lay out the goals and objectives of the city's sustainable procurement program, as well as the expectations of city staff. 
Uh, that companion resolution is resolution number 21-02. Um, so basically we're doing this for the same reason. It would basically lay the groundwork for us to become uh, Maryland Sustainable Certified. Uh, so included in the resolution, as you may have noticed, um, are specific um, and the provisions and assignments to both the city administrator as well as the director of finance and the department directors. Um, and it also um, lays out basically certain data collection and performance reporting um, and definitions. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. All right, very good. Thank you, Ms. Matthews. Um, is there a motion to adopt resolution number 21-02? I'll make the motion. Got a motion by Ms. Gilbert. Is there a second? A second. There's a second by Mr. Dayhoff. Uh, any questions for Ms. Matthews or any discussion? Hearing none, we'll move on to a vote. All those in favor of adoption of resolution number 21-02, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes seem to have it and the ayes have it. And resolution number 21-02 is adopted. Thank you, Ms. Matthews, for... Uh, your work on moving these uh, this item forward. Um, unfinished business. There is no unfinished business of which I am aware. Does anybody else have any unfinished business they wish to uh, remind us? Hearing none, we'll move on to new business. We have four items under new business. First is approval of a contract for research services for water the water reuse pro pilot project. Mr. Glass. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the focus areas of the city's adopted strategic plan um, for ensuring water and sewer capacity is for future generations was, uh, um, as you recall, was adopted from uh, in 2018 and lasted through 2021. The plan recognizes that the future growth and vitality of Westminster is directly tied to water availability. And to achieve that, uh, the city's water capacity goal, the strategic plan included uh, priority project development of an intergovernmental strategy to pursue the acceptance of water reuse by the Maryland Department of the Environment. Uh, water reuse entails the further enhancement of treated wastewater effluents so it is suitable as a beneficial water resource instead of a waste product. This practice is, of course, widely used and successful in uh, the West and Southwest and, uh, and, and further in the, uh, in the Southeast uh, areas of Florida, that kind of thing. Um, it's been for uh, for many years in the uh, in the West as well. Um, but water reuse is a new concept in Maryland, as we've all talked about um, at length in this meeting, actually. Um, and the city of Westminster obviously was uh, was one of the first utilities in the state to initiate water reuse. Uh, we used it for uh, non cooling water um, that. Uh, Non-contact cooling tower water that uh, allowed for the expansion of the frozen uh, food business. Of, I'm not sure everyone will remember, but that was back in in 2012. So we were kind of leaders in that industry in the uh, in the very first part. Um, but as a part of the uh, um, the water reuse uh, pilot, um, we require an in-depth testing and research. Um, as it's necessary with regard to uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria, pharmaceuticals and personal care products, and also uh, heavy metalloids to uh, ad advance this water reuse initiative to show through the pilot that, uh, that these materials can be removed and, uh, and that's a successful endeavor. Um, proposal for these, these uh, services was obtained from the University of Maryland, which was submitted and consequently approved by the United States Bureau of Reclamation grant application um, about a year ago for a 50-50 cost share. Uh, Westminster is fortunate to have the access to the university's research facilities and the expertise of its professors, which could not have been accessed through our customary procurement process. Section 36.4C of the city's code recognizes this unique circumstance and allows the mayor and common council to authorize sole source procurement. City staff believes the procurement of the testing and research services for the water reuse pilot project uh, constitutes this uh, unique circumstance. So the work of the um, University of Maryland staff is compromised or comprised, I'm sorry, of three <laughs> separate research areas. It's not compromised yet anyway. Um, from uh, Dr. Amy Sapkota, and she'll be handling the antibi antibiotic resistant bacteria part and, uh, and her husband, Dr. Amir Sapkata, will be handling the pharmaceutical and 
personal care products section. Dr. Alan Davis, will his area of focus will be on the heavy metalloids. The research of, of the uh, of the the um, results of the of the research will address the key questions related to the protection of public health and considerations for the microbial constituents and both regulated and unregulated compounds as well. A copy of the in-depth University of Maryland proposal is provided as an attachment as well, if you are so inclined to, uh, to read that in the report. The uh, fiscal year 2022 budget proposal includes $460,545 for the continuation of the city's water reuse initiative. And in addition to this proposal that I'm delivering this evening, there will be other costs for consultants, laboratory services, and pilot testing equipment that will be charged to that budget as well. So at this point, uh, staff would recommend that Mayor and Common Council approve the sole source procurement for these research services through the University of Maryland for the city's water reuse pilot project and accept the proposal in the total amount of $150,000 even. And I'll be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you, Mr. Glass. We have a motion, please, on motion uh, to approve. Thank you. Uh, the motion for Mr. Ewing to approve. Second. And a second for Mr. Cavacci. Uh, any questions for Mr. Glass or any discussion? Mr. President, Mr. President. Uh, let me go to the mayor first. I would just like to say, I know this is sole source procurement. I feel like um, you know we have to have a really good reason when we do that. And then this is the exact type of case we should use that in. This is extremely specialized and um, this is the right, the right group to use. Uh, I'd also like to take a second. We've talked a lot about reuse and and people that have worked hard on it. And I don't think we've mentioned Mr. Glass at all. He's probably done the most work on reuse. And uh, yeah, there are very few people in his position that have, I think, the knowledge and expertise to really be able to tackle this uh, the way he has. But um, this is a really important, really, really important piece of it. Uh, it's the right group to go with. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you for uh, you know, mentioning Mr. Glass. We were remiss in not having done that earlier. Mr. Cavacci. Um, just one quick comment. I, I, I did actually at least peruse the documents that were provided. And one thing that stuck out to me just a little bit that I think, I, I just wanna call it a light. I don't think it's a problem, but I just wanna make sure that we're all clear on it. There is a confidentiality section that's that's talked about in, in this agreement with the University of Maryland. And my only concern there is virtually everything that we do is subject to you know public disclosure. So we'd have to be careful, I think, as we proceed to make it clear to them as our counterpart that you know what what they provide to us, at least anything that's going to be talked about in, in a public forum, we're not we're not going to be able to keep that confidential, most likely. So I, I would just say make sure you're communicating that to them because my suspicion is is part of what they're driving at here is it develops some intellectual property that you know the, the university and the group can can ultimately sell and and, and generate revenue from, which is fine because we're going to benefit from this as well. Um, it, it, it's a mutually beneficial relationship, but I, I did notice that in the documentation and just wanted to call it the light. That's all, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Kovacs. That's a good point. Ms. Levant, do you have any uh, you know, counsel to offer us on that point? I believe you're muted still, Ms. Levant. I think that Councilman Kavachi is correct that we need to um, ensure that um, the contractors understand that we are subject to the Public Information Act and that um, we may have to disclose um, certain information related to the contract to the public in order to comply with that statute. However, there are provisions in the Public Information Act in the Public Information Act that um, allow us to protect confidential um, commercial information, such as trade secrets and um, other data of a confidential nature. So um, we seldom have problems with um, contractors when uh, information is requested from the public about public contracts. Ordinarily entities that contract with public entities are very familiar with. Um, the limitations on our ability to withhold information. All right, thank you, Ms. Levanna. We'll count on you to work with the university to uh, make sure that we uh, we keep all that straight. Uh, Mr. Yingling. Um, two things. I think uh, 
you know, kind of the, the idea, obviously, this research is really important, but ultimately what we hope happens is this research then is, you know, when we, when future councils want to, you know, scale up the project and make it, say, the green light, you know, the mayor of the environment is going to require this type of data. So that, that's why we're, why we're doing this, you know. Um, Second thing is to the mayor's point, uh, we talk a lot about water reuse and, and I appreciate the credit that people have given me, but, but this was like not my idea, by the way. Um, Mr. Glass and I went on the uh, public works tour uh, for the very first month I was elected and we talked about, he told he educated me on the water challenges and you know, he said, I said, well, what the heck do we do about this? You know, and he goes, man, water reuse is the future. And we talked about it. And he told me about this. So, and he's done a heck of a lot of work. Um, thank you, Mr. Glass, for this. It's going to ensure uh, our future. I mean, I've always said, like, you know, water sewer is the basic need. And, and uh, this is really important stuff. So thank you very much. You're welcome, sir, and thank you for uh, um, the kind words as well. Uh, with regard to the uh, confidentiality of the uh, University of Maryland, they are are well aware of uh, of our the potential need for us to uh, to share this information in the events requested. That was uh, discussed early on. So um, I, I think the uh, any of their contracts that they put out, um, they're under the uh, the umbrella of the University of Maryland. I think that's uh, that's something that uh, um, is standard in in their in their proposals that they set out as well. All right. Thank you, Mr. Glass. Uh, anything else on this tonight, Mr. President? Mr. Dayhoff. I also shared um, Mr. Kovacci's concern about that when I read that, um, and and I guess what we maybe perhaps have touched upon um, is that as a result of the work that we're doing. I'm looking forward to the uh, University of Maryland being evangelical about academic papers and white papers uh, about our initiative, uh, because I believe I do believe this is a, a way of the future. Um, I do believe there's a way of, of walking that fine line with uh, the University of Maryland and the Public Information Act. So we'll look forward to doing that. But um, I'm glad that we um, I'm glad that it's been brought up. I'm really looking forward to this. This is this is great. This is really good stuff. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Dayhoff. Um, Mr. President. Ms. Gilbert. I just want to um, add to everyone else's sentiments in the room today about the water reuse um, initiative and the fact that Westminster, again, is taking a unique and very forward-looking um, long-term view on our water and our water supply for many future generations ahead. And it is definitely um, Mr. Glass's huge initial initiative and his education and expertise that has led this council and the future councils to look in that direction and ensure that our city and its citizens will be taken care of. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Anyone else? All right. Thank you all very much. Um, I think we are ready for the vote. All those in favor of approving the contract for research services for the water reuse pilot project, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes seem to have it and the ayes have it. And uh, the contract is approved. Thank you, Mr. Glass. Uh, the next item is approval of con the contract for fiscal year 2021 audit. Ms. Colston. Good evening. As you are aware, Brown, Schultz, Sheridan, and Fritz performed the annual audit and prepared the city's fiscal year ending 2020 financial reports. All the services were satisfactor satisfactorily performed. It is expected that uh, by contracting with BSSF for the fiscal year ending 2021 audit in preparation of the associated financial reports that the city will realize savings in both cost and time efficiency. The proposed contract with BSSF has an associated cost of 40,500. At this time, staff recommends that the Common Council authorize a contract with Brown, Schultz, Sheridan and Fritz to perform the work outlined in the attached contract and to authorize the mayor's execution of the same. And I would be happy to answer any questions should you have them. 
Thank you, Ms. Colston. Are there any questions for Ms. Colston? Or, well, actually, let's get a motion. I'll, may I have a motion, please, on approving the contract for fiscal year 2021? So moved, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Cavacci. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Gilbert. A uh, motion by Mr. Cavacci and a second by Ms. Gilbert. Um, so Ms. Colson, I would just ask, so, you know, in the past, you know, not every time, but frequently we've done a, um, a multi-year, you know, not many years, but a, a multi-year uh, contract or agreement for these kinds of services. I know this was one of, this was a one-off for last year and we're doing another one year. Um, are you planning on um, you know, taking a look at a uh, multi-year for going forward after that? Um, yeah, I, I, I anticipated going with them with this year um, and then possibly revisiting that and, and going out to bid again next year. All right, very good. I, I always think it's a good idea to, you know, you know, we like working with auditors and, you know, it's always a good idea to not get too comfortable with your auditor and to uh, you get a new one every once in a while so that they can catch things that uh, maybe uh, need to get caught. So uh, glad that we, we constantly take a look at that. Um, so if there's no further discussion, move on to a vote. Mr. The, Mr. Dayhoff. I wholeheartedly support what you just said. I, I want to look for um, a, a local um, a, accounting firm uh, to take a look at it. I'd like to put it out to bid next year. Okay, and of course, you know, these folks are local, which is great. Well, they were just recently purchased. Yeah, they are, but you know, they're still working here in Westminster. Right? Okay, so, yeah. I'll work with that. Right. I'd like to- but Yes, we should always be on the lookout, you're right. I'd like to put it out to bid next year. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, any further discussion? All right. Hearing none, we'll move on to a vote. All those in favor of approving the contract for fiscal year 2021 audit, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. The ayes seem to have it, the ayes have it, and the contract is approved. Now we'll move on to our work session number two regarding the fiscal year 2022 budget proposal. Uh, we've had some discussion last week, and we'll pick it up where we left off. Um, and for that, we'll turn to Ms. Matthews and Ms. Colston. Can you update us uh, on where we are as of this moment? Yes, I think Ms. Colston um, provided a very good summary of what we have done since your special meeting uh, a week ago. Um, we certainly would be happy to answer any questions that you all have, um, but I think she did a, a great job of just sort of walking through the changes that we've incorporated into ordinance number um, 135. Right, and that will, just to remind everybody, that's, uh, you know, that, that memo is back up under the um, you know, public hearing section you know, for, for easy reference. All right, thank you. So the, um, note of the changes, the, the you know, there's um, five changes noted, you know, in, uh, from our discussion um, at the last meeting. Um, is there any discussion? Or, you know, on would anybody like to go back and discuss any of these, or is there any new discussion that anybody would like to bring up as part of the work session? All right, very good. Well, thank you. Well, I think we're in a good place with the budget. You know, we uh, I think we made uh, some good choices at the last meeting, and uh, yeah, I think you know, we're in a position for staff to prepare the final draft. Thank you. Um, two things, uh, Council President Parker, I just would like to mention that are in process that are, are all kind of good news things that are not accounted for in the um, ordinance at this point because it's not definitive. But um, since your last meeting, uh, we did receive information from the county. They have opened up the FY 2022 program open space application process. Um, you may recall from the transmittal message that we were hopeful there would be program open space funds in FY 2022, but no information was available. Um, Ms. Gruber will be applying for um, what is typically set aside for each of the four uh, municipalities that are in this current cycle. Um, she will be applying for funding for Wakefield. So a portion of that project um, may be further deferred um, by grant funding. Um, we have been advised that our share of the $329,000 um, kind of pot, if you will, um, should be $82,250. Ms. Gruber does have to go through the application process, but I think we would all agree she has a really great track record on that front. The letter from the county also indicated that each municipality may be um, eligible to receive an additional $31,000 above that $82,250. 
Um, so Ms. Colston, I'm sure will recognize that funding um, once Ms. Gruber has applied for it and we receive official notification um, that the funds have been awarded. Um, and also as a reminder, we are still um, hopeful that we will be able to sell the winter's lot uh, to Winchester West LLC. If that uh, does occur, we are still working through um, the title search issue that I mentioned at your last meeting. Uh, but if that does come to pass, the city will also gain $120,000 um, in the general fund that is not currently accounted for um, in, in the budget ordinance. So just wanted to mention that to you this evening. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Matthews. And I think we're all aware that that will create the opportunity for us to revisit a couple of things that uh, we would have liked to have done this, you know, in the, this cycle that uh, it will be able to pick up, you know, hopefully in the next uh, couple of months and, you know, get some more things done. So that's that's very good news. Mr. President. Mr. Cavacci. So, Ms. Matthews, on the project open space distribution, there's four municipalities that are eligible for it, correct? Yes, typically what they do is there's eight municipalities in Carroll County, as you know, for every other year. Every other year. And they take the pot of money, 330000 or whatever it is, and divide it equally between the four municipalities, correct? Which seems fair, considering we probably have a higher population than all the other three pot municipalities put together. And I complain about this every other year. I'll complain about it again, and I hope the commissioners are watching. It's nonsense. It, we, they split it even four ways, yet we're paying you know, four and five and six times the tax revenue towards the county, our citizens, yet we get a, a one-eighth share of that pot. Ridiculous. Thank I, you, Mr. President. I could not agree with you more, and I think just the ridiculous of population is just the amount of ridiculous we have compared to other municipalities. Made this comment for six times now over the past 12 years, and I'll keep saying it. it's ridiculous. Well, thank you, Mr. Cavacci. And it's, you know, it's the same with fire service and a number of other things that, uh, you know, the county, it, it makes no sense the way to handle this. Anybody else wish to be heard on this before we move on? All right. Um, so then I think uh, with that, we can, unless anybody objects, we can wrap up this work session and we'll be prepared to uh, give the budget's final consideration at our meeting next week. Yeah. All right. I think we can be proud of the budget. I think so too. Thank you, Mr. Dayhoff. All right. Uh, Mr. Cavacci, I believe you have a motion for us. I do, Mr. President. Uh, under the Open e Meetings Act, uh, the statutory authority to close a session under the Maryland Annotated Code of General Provisions, Article 3-305B, to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or, or personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals. And item number seven, I added one. So, um, and item number seven, to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice on a legal matter, Mr. President. All right, thank you, Mr. Kavachi. Uh, we have a motion to go into a uh, closed session at the conclusion of our regular session. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. There's a motion by Mr. Kavachi and a second by Mr. Yingling. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed say nay. The ayes seem to have it and the ayes have it. And the motion is adopted. Um, thank you very much. Now it's time for departmental reports. Ms. Matthews, one last time, would yeah. you like to take us through the department uh, reports? Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, start with uh, giving Councilmember Dayhoff the opportunity to provide a report on the activities of the Westminster Volunteer Fire Department, if he so wishes. Report, thank you, ma'am. Okay, and uh, it's my great pleasure then next to um, have call on our, our new Director of Housing Services, Mr. Brown, who is uh, having his first opportunity to do a departmental operating report this evening. Good. Thank you. Uh, uh, it's, it's my pleasure to appear before you. I am transitioning in and um, just want to thank um, Ms. Matthews for making that transition very smooth. And I'm looking forward to getting to work uh, further and getting to know the staff. So other than that, I have nothing else new to report. Hopefully in the future, I'll have something more to report. Thank you, Mr. Duran. And we're so glad to have you as part of the city team. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Colston. Good evening. I do not have anything further in the way of finance, but I did want to take this moment to um, thank Ms. Matthews for her leadership in the past nine months that I've worked here. It's not been long, but it has been a wonderful nine months. Um, I was given the opportunity and had been asked what what qualities we look for in a uh, city administrator, and I found myself 
uh, listing off qualities that Miss Matthews herself exemplifies. And for that, I wanted to say thank you. I did learn quite a bit from you in that short time and, and you will be missed. Thank you very much, Ms. Colston. And it's been an absolute pleasure to, to work with you the past nine months. Uh, Mr. Davidson, our technology director. Good afternoon, a couple of things. Um, we're starting to work on the move of the uh, temporary wastewater move. So we're moving them from their current offices out to the stock, stockyard into the temporary offices. So we'll begin that within the next couple of weeks. And in the next few weeks, we'll start the camera project that was approved by the council, the downtown cameras. Uh, also attended a uh, three-day demo on the new financial system, and it looks pretty promising. That's all I have. Any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you, Mr. Davidson. Uh, Mr. Depot. Um, good evening. Uh, I just want to echo Ms. Colson's comments as well. I've been having some computer issues, so I apologize. But Barb, I really do appreciate the time and guidance uh, that you provided me over this time, and I wish you the best. Um, for planning, we do have Stonegate coming up with planning commission for Section 5 plat. It's for 40 more lots, and they are also proposing an adjustment for eight more uh, building permits for this year for a total of 48. And we are looking at a possibility of increasing the amount of building permits through an administrative adjustment as well, because as you can imagine, uh, growth is happening pretty rapidly for residential development. We don't have anything planned for Board of Zoning Appeals or HDC this coming month, and that completes my report. I'm ready, I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Depot. Mr. Glass. Yes, just a few items. The uh, inflow and infiltration work is progressing. They're uh, um, still in the process of clearing and grubbing. They have their bypass pumping set up and they are scheduled to begin slip lining tomorrow. So um, it would probably be worthwhile for interested parties to uh, um, to get in touch. And um, so you'll be able to see that process as, as, it, uh, as it takes place. It's, uh, um, you know, once you see one, you see them all, I guess. But if you have never seen one, you'll never see any. So uh, it's probably a good thing to uh, to check that out if you're interested. The park and garage rehab is progressing as well. Uh, the contract is, or contractor has uh, shifted the closure of uh, parking spaces. So he had to close one side to do his work. Now he's uh, switched that to the other side. Um, still, the uh, the uh, parking garages are at about 50% uh, capacity, but um, but that, that work is uh, is working is coming along as well. The well eight PFAS study is uh, continuing. At this point, they're determining the options um, for the uh, treatment work uh, based on samples and uh, and their recent testing that they did. The ENR facility. I mentioned this a little earlier. I think the contractors uh, is is working at the uh, the solids processing building. They're placing some pre precast concrete there. Uh, the big push right now is for the completion of the denitrification facility, as that is uh, milestone number one. Um, with regard to water reuse, uh, the ultrafiltration and uh, ultraviolet disinfection systems are shipping this week. Um, we'll be assembling and, and setting up hopefully uh, next week and uh, make them order by the end of the month is the goal. So that's all I have unless there are questions. Mr. Mr. President, one, or Ms. Matthews, I have one question. Mr. Glass, do, on, on the relining, are, is it, do they steam heat the liner before they pull it into the pipes? So, is, that, is that the technique that they use? So this is a fold-in form. So the pipeline that, uh, that they're pulling in is, uh, is um, deformed in a kind of a U-shape. Mm -hmm. And they'll pull that in in a deformed state, and then that's when they heat it and uh, and expand it to uh, against the inside of the host pipe. Then, but it's a it's a neat process. If you have the opportunity, it would be worthwhile to see. Hmm. Sounds interesting. It's about six thousand feet of pipe that we have to do, a little over a mile. Thank you, Mr. Glass, Miss Gruber. Oh, I saw 
get my video to turn on one more try. There yeah. we go. Sorry about that. Um, I just wanted to extend the thanks from the Recreation and Parks Department to the Council for your positive comments uh, regarding the wine stroll. I also wanted to thank Council Members Kavachi, Gilbert, and Dayhoff who supported the event person on Saturday. Um, it certainly was not a typical stroll. However, um, we did have approximately 500 people in attendance um, spread over two separate seatings and certainly received a lot of positive comments. And we are now quickly shifting gears to our Flower and Jazz Festival that is less than two weeks away, scheduled for May 8th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And instead of being on Main Street, we will be in, the, in City Park, uh, the Longwell Surface Lot and the Sherwood Lot. We will be hosting vendors in those three areas and that will give us the ability to keep a more watchful eye on our crowd size and make sure that that is regulated and that everyone stays safe. Um, we have been dealing, unfortunately, with a string of vandalism issues in some of our parks. Uh, King Park, we had some play equipment damaged. Looks like some individuals set fire to one of the stairs. Um, the zip line was recently damaged in City Park and in JC Park on Saturday night. And again, on Sunday night, the restrooms were broken into. So we've been working closely with the streets department um, to fix the issues that were created from the vandals. And we're also working alongside the police department to figure out um, who perhaps created the issues at JC Park because we were able to pull video surveillance of that individual. Okay. Um, and lastly, some good news. Tahoma Farm Park playground installation is nearing completion. Uh, the engineered wood fiber was delivered today. It still needs to be applied to the designated use area zone around the play equipment. And a final inspection and walkthrough needs to be scheduled with the contractor only after a few minor components that are back ordered are installed. So we are almost across the finish line on that exciting project. And we have been fielding a lot of phone calls asking when will it be done? Um, so I hope to have a date very soon on that uh, to share with you and to um, open that up to our community. And lastly, Ms. Matthews, I just wanted to thank you for your service and dedication to the city. I wish you all of the best uh, for a happy and fulfilling retirement. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Abby, and it's been wonderful working with you. Uh, uh, Chief Ledwell. Good evening again. So just to pick up on what uh, Ms. Gruber was saying, uh, so part of the, the camera, um, security cameras will provide significant coverage to the city park. So that should be helpful moving forward with um, incidents in the park. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Public Works who worked with us and helped to erect some uh, more clear and visible signage uh, adjacent to the Colonel Rosser lot uh, uh, to deter vehicles from traveling out onto uh, West Main Street against the one-way sign. Um, we've had several traffic complaints out there and you now we have some more visible signage to help prevent that. Um, we received some money through grants for recruitment and retention, and we're using some of the some of those funds to film a series of small recruitment uh, videos. So we're currently working on that and um, looking forward to pushing that out shortly. The Chamber of Commerce typically holds an annual public safety awards due to the pandemic. They had to cancel it this year, so instead they delivered a tray of goodies. And uh, we filmed a couple of short uh, videos uh, in place of that annual ceremony. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, next up is our HR director, Ms. McCullough. Good evening. Uh, no report for the Human Resources Department. Uh, Barb, I wish you the best on your retirement. 
Thank you so much. And thanks for giving up one of the uh, oh so rare city of Westminster plates, Ray. I really appreciate it. Great. <laughs> and then um, Thank you. next up and last, but certainly not least, our city clerk, Ms. Kosowski has a report this evening. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know that this coming week we will be having um, the swearing-in of the election judges, um, as well as um, their training. Um, we also have been receiving a lot of absentee ballots, and um, I just wanted to let everyone know that we do have an absentee ballot drop box um, at the rear um, of our new building. So um, everyone seems to um, be utilizing it. Um, I actually had several drop off today. So it's been kind of exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. And I think, um, I guess my just last thing I would share with the mayor and common council, um, I am in the process of preparing sort of a, a transition memo um, that I will give to the mayor and council president. Um, certainly, it's my been my commitment to you all the last four months is to try to leave things in as good an order as I can. Um, so I hope to get that to them when, Wednesday or Thursday at the latest, just sort of letting them know where things stand. Um, I think that concludes staff's reports, unless there's any questions that we'd be happy to answer for you. Right, thank you, Ms. Matthews. Are there any questions from Ms. Matthews or any other department heads? Mr. President. Mr. Dayhoff. I wanted to uh, publicly acknowledge that I've, I've heard a number of anecdotal reports of how Ms. Viskoski has gone above and beyond the call of duty and gone out of her way to make sure that folks uh, have gotten answers to their questions about the election. Uh, there's uh, there's several reports about how you've gone out of your way to help folks with the absentee ballots. I can't thank you enough. In history and tradition in the city of Westminster that we do elections well, and you're certainly continuing uh, that reputation. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Dayhoff. All right. Um, move on. So I guess that concludes the department of reports. We'll move on now to citizens' comments. It's the final item on our agenda. This is where we invite the public to address the mayor and council on any issues that pertain to tonight's agenda or any other city issues. During these virtual meetings, we will invite comments to be sent to our city clerk at comments at westgov.com. Commenters should include their address and phone number with their comments. At this time at every meeting, I will read out the comments we have received, and I'm advised by the city clerk that we have not received any comments since our last meeting. And that concludes our agenda for this evening and the meeting. With that, without objection, we are adjourned. Please stay safe and healthy, and please wear your mask and get your shot. Good night.